Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Let me start off with a few broad comments about what we experienced in the fourth quarter, uh, which I would say, even though we had to deal with a meaningful Omicron wave and a bunch of disruption in travel, and of course that was not great for travelers worldwide, uh, it was encouraging in many ways. And I think what we observed most notably is that the issues that evolved were really issues of inconvenience. There were border, shut, border shutdowns, there were planes out of service because uh, pilots and, and crew uh, were sick, uh, things of that nature. But there was far less consumer fear over traveling. And really, it was an issue of the inconvenience of the health issues. Uh, what we believe will come from this, presuming the next waves continue in, in a ever lightening way, is that the world has essentially gotten accustomed to the pandemic. It will enter perhaps an endemic stage, and uh, governments and industry, et cetera, will adapt much more easily as the next waves come. And in turn, this will continue to disrupt travel less and less. And certainly, the consumers have remained willing to travel throughout. And uh, with the return of uh, staff to the air and, uh, and, and the relief of border issues, we are seeing a, a, a solid return to travel. Eric will take us through the numbers. Uh, and the trends, but uh, suffice it to say that we are pleased to see that bookings have strongly rebounded since only anywhere that Omicron has topped out, and certainly we're seeing that broadly across our biggest markets. I've talked before about mix effects, uh, and I won't belabor those except to say it continues to be real. You know, certain areas are doing better than other, air is more challenged than other parts, geos, certain geos are more difficult than others. Uh, but in general, we feel good that, that big cities have not recovered as much yet, and that is a good guide for us. International travel is still yet to return as strongly. That is another good guide for us. So we feel like directionally that the things that are will be coming back as COVID lightens generally benefit us, and we're looking forward to the days of, of those returns. Uh, with that said, I'm not really prone to doing retrospectives, but we are starting to focus much more on the future of our business and what we're going to deliver instead of how we manage COVID day to day. And I thought it would be useful perhaps to just reflect on where we've been and where we've taken the company over the last couple of years since we entered COVID. So first of all, the thing you have all observed and, and clearly have liked is that we've been able to simplify and make the business more efficient. And it, it's easy to observe and it's important. Obviously there are more important things to our long-term future, but I'll spend a minute on, on simplification. Uh, we've been able to use you know, our push for new technology solutions, our push to reorganize the company in a more single goal fashion. Uh, we've optimized third party spending and tools and many things, and we've become a much more efficient enterprise. In fact, today, and I, I should mention, as you know, we've also shut down and, or sold off certain businesses that we believe were non core. As a result of that, we're running the company now with roughly 10,000 fewer people than we were. Uh, at the end of 2019, which is a great credit to the people who are here who have driven you know, a ton of hard work uh, towards that goal of really running the company in a smart, smarter, more efficient, better way. So just to break that into a few parts, on the demand front, as you know, we've combined our multiple brands working in silos into one unified house of brands with a singular focus on driving travelers to the right product at the right time. This strategy is built on superior creative, making the brands make sense together, buying together in an efficient way, and of course using performance marketing along with brand to really drive a more efficient way of bringing travelers into our universe. We believe we are well on our way to that journey. You know, hope you enjoy our Super Bowl ads in a few days. I think they're terrific. Um, but it is a unified strategy that's about really delivering end-to-end -end a great demand generation strategy that is efficient and we believe can drive better outcomes in the future for us. We also believe, as you know, that loyalty will play an important role and we are bringing our loyalty programs together and that will begin to take shape over the course of the year and I think pay dividends for years and years to come and we're excited about that. On the technical front, you now this has really been the heart and soul of what we've been working on, which is getting to a singular platform so that we can drive a velocity of innovation for travelers and for our partners and really take travel to the next iteration uh, for the online app-based travel business. Uh, we, we've been on this journey for a while. We've, uh, we've talked about how we're moving multiple stacks into a single stack. 
Um, that's more than just a like efficiency story or anything else. It's really about building it as a set of microservices with APIs that can be externalized and can more easily be used internally to drive these great outcomes for our travelers and our partners. And when I say travelers, I really mean all travelers, because for the first time as we build this out, we will be able to create innovation in our stack that impacts all our travelers, our B2C travelers, our B2B travelers, all in the same moment. So when we make an improvement in the checkout path or we make an improvement in the app, all those benefits will inure to the traveler wherever they come from, and it will be able to drive real impact instead of the siloed way we used to have to work our way through it. So I think it's a really important step for both how we run our business, how much innovation and velocity we can bring to the travelers and partner experience, and frankly, just generally, uh, you know, how we innovate and drive the entire industry forward. We're really excited about what's coming. It's a big year of delivery for us, but uh, there are amazing things coming, we think, for the traveler, from the discovery elements to the service elements and everything in between. And again, that will inure to the benefit of all travelers in our ecosystem. And finally, on the, on the B2B side, which is really now an amalgamation of our, our B2B partners who drive demand and our partners who bring us supply, and more and more we see that as one universe. We've combined those teams into one group that essentially can have a 360 relationship with any partner, and therefore any partner can benefit not only from selling into our platform, but also taking services out of our platform. And we think that approach is going to be really powerful. Uh, we've kept very close to our partners uh, over the pandemic, obviously. We've had shared challenges and opportunities, um, and we've renewed a lot of deals across lodging, air, and car. Uh, and most of these deals have come with expanded capabilities where we've delivered more for our partners and we believe helped them drive their own businesses to better outcomes. Uh, we're excited about this partnership approach. Uh, it's no longer just about supply or just about can we drive demand. It's really about can we make our partners' businesses better, and we're keenly focused on that. So to close, I'll just say, you know, we've never count COVID out. We've dealt with a fair number of body blows over the last couple of years. But the industry has proven resilient. I think demand has proven even more resilient. Uh, and we expect a significant rebound. And while we're excited to ride the rebound, the important thing for us is really delivery. We have to deliver on all the promises we've made about how, how we're going to improve the product, traveler experience, uh, and how we're going to continue to run an efficient and effective uh, business. Our first question today comes from the line of Kevin Kopelman from Cohen & Company. Thanks, Peter. And if I could just ask about the latest trends, um, you noted that uh, that lodging is now up at, in the last week versus 2019. Can you talk about how that might play out given um, cities haven't fully come back yet and international travel is still uh, certainly not fully back given the restrictions are not are not up yet? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I think, look, there's a lot of benefit in that for us in the sense that historically big cities and international have been an area of strength for us uh, relative to some of what we've seen during COVID, like domestic travel into tertiary markets, et cetera, which have been historically weak. Uh, on the other hand, we've benefited greatly. Uh, Bur Burbo has been super strong. It's benefited from the leisure travel and the longer-term travel of vacation rental and people liking that. Uh, during COVID where they could isolate with their families, et cetera. Um, so it's a little tricky to predict, but I would say broadly the stuff that's left to come uh, in many ways favors our strongest areas. Uh, so I think that's positive. But, um, you know, the mixes have been hard to predict over time, and so I don't want to get too, you know, get too much into prognosticating, but I think we've got some good runway ahead in where the puck is going mixed two metaphors there, um, but, uh, and, and we feel good about that. Uh, you know, you never know what the back end unintended consequences are, but I think uh, being positive now with everything that's left to come is making us feel pretty good. Our next question today comes from the line of Naveed Khan from Truist Securities. Naveed, your line is open. Great, thank you. Uh, two questions, please. Um, Maybe just one on the on the on the comeback and travel as it continues to to build in 22. How do you see the the mix of direct versus paid traffic uh, coming to your platform? Can you maybe just touch on the opportunities 
between the different levers that you have to pull um, between CRM versus uh, branding versus uh, performance channels? Sure. Uh, I'll go first and, and deal with the comeback and travel. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, I'm glad you mentioned CRM. You know, we have so much opportunity to improve our direct relationship with consumers. Uh, you know, we've historically fished out of the big ponds of Google and Meta, et cetera, and brought, brought customers in. Uh, and candidly, not done uh, a good enough job in retaining those customers and making it sticky and making sure the experience is good. We are keenly focused on bringing travelers in now, making sure they enjoy all the benefits of what we have to provide, member pricing, uh, loyalty, et cetera, and, they, and that they get a better app experience, better CRM, which we are rebuilding like everything else, uh, and we really focus on retaining them and keep them coming back as often as possible directly. It doesn't mean we don't expect to use performance marketing and all the usual channels, but we want to be able to uh, derive much more long-term value from those customers we acquire and then in turn keep. So um, we hope very greatly that the, uh, that the denominator will be expanding, we'll just be bringing in more travelers, and that more and more of them will we will be able to create direct relationships where they are coming back, they recognize the benefits we give them in price and service, and discovery and everything else. Obviously, there's more to come there because as the products improve and uh, the experience improves, it all gets easier and then Flywheel presumably uh, you know, turns faster. But that is our focus and, and that is what we hope to derive from this. We're not, we're not projecting what percentage will be what, but uh, it is very closely tied to all the work we are doing to drive the traveler experience. Our next question today comes from Stephen Drew from Credit Suisse. Stephen, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. So um, I think it's been some time since we've seen these types of metrics, but you know, anything you can share in terms of what percent of the verbal inventory has now been integrated into Brand Expedia and the other outlets? I mean, ultimately, I think uh, you want to present the traveler with more choice and improve the overall shopping experience. And I think the last time we talked about this, uh, you guys are still kind of in the experimental phase and trying to see, uh, you know, how much of a better shopping experience you could drive. But sort of any sort of perspective on that would be helpful. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Uh, I would say um, we are still building to it. Uh, it is a core part of our plan. Uh, and by the way, it's not simply so that we can provide it to our own uh, travelers. It's also so that we can provide it to our B2B partners so that they can provide it to their travelers. So it's a, it's a quite interesting and substantial opportunity, we believe. Um, we do have it integrated. It's not a great integration, but we do have it integrated into uh, Expedia uh, and Hotels.com. Uh, the issue has been it only works, among other things, not being a great product experience is what the main thing we have to fix. But also, it does not have an approach that works for, um, for you know, the properties that you have to reserve and then we have to, uh, they're not instant booked, the ones where we have to go to the owners and see if they are okay for the booking. That has, is, a, is a construct that is not part of what is currently possible in uh, the Expedia brand or the Hotels.com brand, et cetera. So it's kind of a two-part thing. One is we want to improve the product experience for the traveler, make it a better integration, make it easier to book, make the, make the uh, content more usable, easier to, easier to understand so the travelers can make the decisions. And then we want to expand the universe of the, prop, the type of properties that can be available through those pipes. And that is where, where, the big, you know, where another big expansion in the idea comes. Those are both in the works. They will take some time. I would say they're not our highest priority, but they're far from our lowest priority. They're, they're a big, important thing, and we have teams working on it, and we will, uh, you know, we expect to continue to see improvement. You know, we have a lot happening on the front end of the product this year in terms of, you know, integrating a number of our brands to the same front end rails, uh, and a lot of opportunity to improve those experiences and roll out a new app construct, et cetera. So all of those things, you know, you have to obviously an order of operations question, but as those things roll out, this experience will get better and better, and, and we believe will become a, a bigger feature of the business. 